Propeller Specialist Jeff Merrill, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Douglas Cochran. Jeff and I have teamed up to make a series of videos called The Physics of Docking. In our last two segments, we showed you how to dock on a side tie. In this segment, we'll use similar techniques to dock in a slip with the bow pointed in. You'll recall our discussion of the challenges of bringing a boat in parallel close to a dock. If you're too close, you can't maneuver. If you're too far off, it's challenging to move the boat sideways. The same is true when bringing a boat into a slip. You'd think that you could just drive straight in, but this can set you up for an embarrassing failure. It's best to come in at a bit of an angle, even if you can't achieve a full 30 degrees like we did with the side tie. So think about a slip as just another side tie, but with obstructions on the outside. I think the, the most common approach to a dock is coming bow in. Uh, it's, it's easier, it's simpler, it's, it's kind of like when you park your car in a parking lot, you mostly park bow in. Uh, but there are some options there and some things to think about. What, what are you thinking about when you're coming in for bow in? Well, first of all, uh, the tendency is to try to come in parallel to the dock. And as we spoke earlier in one of our other segments, coming in parallel can leave you in a treacherous position because if you're too close, you're banging the dock and it's hard to get off the dock. And if you're too far off, it's hard to get the boat to move sideways to get closer. So just like with a side tie, we want to come in at a bit of an angle right. and then kick the stern over when we're where we Use the forces of the boat to help position us properly for our entry. Yes. Uh, so some, what, what I like to do when I'm going to go to a marina is I'll call ahead and try to find out if I, uh, most boats you want to tie starboard side to because typically that's a side deck. Uh, on this particular boat we have either side so it makes it easier but not every boat has that. So you can, you can call and try to get a preference for which side you're going to tie to but you should probably be set up for, for fenders on both sides anyway. What, what are your thoughts on that? We, we always like to do that. It gives us the flexibility that if we get in a tight spot or, or the wind is carrying us off or something Sometimes you just have to get into another slip while you reorganize. So if you've got fenders and lines on both sides, it gives you the flexibility to... Yeah, you, you come way. in with a game plan to park starboard side two, but you might have to change to port side two. And once you get a couple lines on and, and you can shut things down, you can maneuver the boat and put it back exactly how you want. But you just That's need to right. get those lines on. But the main thing I want to stress is when you're doing this, especially when you're learning how and get, learning your boat, do it slow and easy. There's no advantage to going fast unless there's heavy winds or something. And we're gonna talk about adverse conditions later, but, but uh, assuming you're in decent conditions, fast is dangerous, slow is easy. I've even heard it called uh, a lot of times that slow is pro. And I think that's, those are good words to, uh, to remember when you're docking. That's right, a lot, lot less chance of crunching. Well, the, the, the slower you hit something, the less damage you're gonna cause. That's right. <laughs> and if you have, there's two kinds of boaters, those who have hit other boats and those who lie. Yeah, those who haven't yet, right? Those who lie is better. Good. All right. Thanks. I've said this before, but let me stress it again. Take things slow and easy. Unless there are adverse conditions like wind or current, there's no reason to hurry and lots of reasons to go slow. No one likes the sound of crunching fiberglass. If you find the boat isn't where you want it, stop, reevaluate, and maybe back away to try again. There's no harm in drifting for a minute to catch your breath and rethink your approach. We're going down the fairway. We're approaching a slip. We're going to go bow in and we're going to turn to port. So one of the uh, balancing acts is to keep your speed slow enough, but have enough momentum and weigh on so that you can rotate. We do have the wing engine on, which is what we use to power our thrusters. So they're there if we need them. So I go into reverse to kill off a little speed here. You'll notice I've got the joystick hard to port. It's not activated yet. When I'm ready to activate, it will help me kick the stern over in a hurry. So we'll do that now. And we'll go into forward and you'll see that we rotate around hard.
And I'll back up a little bit to give us working room here. About four feet from the dock. I'll go back into forward to rotate around some more. Okay, you're looking pretty good on the starboard side. You have three feet on the port side, you're looking good. Straighten up my helm. About one foot on the port side. I'm going to thrust a little bit just to... And we'll ease our way in. You can bring your stern a little bit to port. Ease our way in and we'll stop. Good, now we would throw the dock lines over and tie up. Nicely done, Douglas. A good rule on any boat is no jumping to the dock. Falling in the water between the boat and the dock is poor form. If you can't comfortably step ashore, wait until the helmsman gets the boat closer. We've both learned a lot of things the hard way and by mistake, and uh, we've developed rules to prevent ourselves from repeating those same mistakes. But one thing that I think we'll both agree with is you never want to leave the helm when the boat's in gear. If you have to leave the helm station, put it in neutral. And I try to, when I'm docking, make sure that I keep my hand on the throttle. With, with a mechanical shift, it's pretty easy to tell, but with some of the electronic ones, you can bring it back and think you're in neutral and you're still in forward. So you got to make sure you double check you're in neutral before you leave the helm station. That's right. Otherwise, the boat can keep moving and you'll be embarrassed by the time you get back in, yeah. in place. Yeah. But just to review what we do, we come into our slip at, a, at an angle and we can't always get a full 30 degrees or whatever is ideal because there might be a big boat next to us. Right. But we come in on some angle so that when we uh, get to the dock, we're not up against it till we're ready to get up against it. Then we kick the stern over and stop the boat. And it basically is so simple, anybody could do it. Good, well, let's, uh, let's go do it. Okay. I encourage you to take your boat out on some quiet, calm day and practice touch and go landings in your slip. It won't take long before you'll be doing it like an old salt. Cheerio for now. See you in the next segment. Hi Trawler fans, thank you for watching the JMYS YouTube video channel. I'm fortunate to be offshore again. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, you can click the button below. We also like to publish other listings and other Trawler Skills videos. You can click on one of those on the side to watch those. Thank you very much for your thumbs up. We love having you watch our videos. We love putting them together for you and hope you come back again soon.